why you should do fellowships but i'm going to tell you about the practical aspects so if right now after going home if you want to apply then what you should do and how you should go about it so uh, the difference between the basic difference between the us and uk and uh, the europe is that in different countries you will have uh, different protocols you do not have to you know go through the exam so there are a lot of people so when i was in my final year of ms i always knew that i am going to do an arthroscopy fellowship but i did not have any orthopedic background so i don't know how to go about it so in such situations uh, when you when you really don't have any you don't have any memberships or you don't want to go ahead with the memberships of the association and uh, you have not prepared for the mle or any mrcs and you want to go and do an abroad fellowship then central europe and uh, premier countries like german germany austria france uh, italy spain have lot of fellowships which you can directly apply and go for uh, however there is no standardization there is no straight single way to apply for these fellowships and uh, you should understand that if you are going for a fellowship in central europe then it is more about achieving experience rather than a structured learning and or a job or a work experience so you should set your goals uh, very clear right from the beginning so how do you apply so if you uh, have just passed your ms examination and uh, you are you know aspiring arthroscopy surgeon and you want to apply then there are different ways in which you can go about it first is a blanket application so in europe as aditya very well put forth you know you can actually apply directly to the institutes or directly to the surgeons on their personal email ids you can uh, uh, find them online also you can find them from the articles and then you can apply so start applying don't think about what you are going to get or who is going to revert you or who is going to call you because if you you you'll have to work with the uh, you know probability so if you apply 100 applications then maybe you'll get 10 replies and you will be able to go to two or three places if you directly apply on the email <coughs> email ids okay so the other way is to know it from your immediate senior so i'll take one by one through a letter of recommendation and through developing con contacts through conferences so as i said like you have to uh, right away start applying if you want to go for a fellowship and you are really you'll really not be sure from where you will get an apply reply once you get a reply you can think about whether you will be proceeding with this or whether this particular fellowships meet your requirement or not and then decide so what if you get multiple rewards then you are at benefit because then you can choose which which fellowship is going to help you more in the long term so in uh, you know the most important as again aditya mentioned this particular point it, the most important part of the expense is your accommodation and since all these fellowships will not pay you then uh, it's it's uh, it's easier to choose the fellowship if you have an accommodation provided there are a lot of hospitals or tertiary hospitals that will provide you accommodation either free or they can provide you at a subsidized rate so always uh, make sure that you ask for it so uh, other thing is facilitating through the immediate seniors your friends colleagues who are always who have already been there so uh, he is one of my colleague dr sumit so when i was there i uh, i was in uh, good communication with the bosses and the staff over there and that is how i could push my friends inside uh, through the fellowships after uh, you know uh, after my tenure so you'll be also be able to get a lot of knowledge to a lot of groups so if you have just passed out you should join the groups and there are knowledge lot of knowledge available on the groups regarding how to go about application for your fellowships so this is the way i got my fellowships if you are having uh, if you are working with your boss you should have a good cordial relationship this is the easiest way to reach europe so if you want to if you get a letter of recommendation uh, or if your boss has friends over there then you will you will be uh, uh you can actually get there to the shortest way one thing you should understand is again this was mentioned in one of the lectures that you have to keep the standards of the fellowship because if you go there and if you behave uh, very well then they'll be more than happy to welcome your colleagues and uh, the next following fellows uh in germany there was one there was one very good fellowship which used to offer payment for the fellows which stopped because of some of the ruckus that was created so you make sure that once you go there you keep good standards you have uh, uh, you know good communication with the people and then 
maybe you can help your colleagues go there uh, f for, for longer period of times. <coughs> Things to note when you're applying for a visa, this is also very important because I have friends who have applied for fellowships, got their fellowships, did their bookings, did their stay, paid for it, and when they applied for visa, their visa got re rejected. So, in Europe, make sure that you don't mention about operating or assisting. Although you, you will be assisting there, you may also get to operate if you are really good at your work, but you never mention that when you are applying for the visa. And uh, also you can take visa from different countries because Europe, it's, it's a common visa and you have to do a little bit of your homework before you apply for the visa. So what you should practically expect when you go there, okay, so since we don't know the local languages, most of us, and we are not giving any exams for uh, you know, learning the local languages, it is going to be mainly an operative work or the OT work that you're going to take, uh, learn there. And uh, definitely, I mean, I was not able to communicate with the patients over there, though I had learned German, but then I was not able to communicate because of the accent. Uh, so you are going to learn mainly what you should be doing in your operation theater. And basically, they in Europe, the people are very friendly, but it is up to you how you de develop your uh, rapport with them. Once they are, uh, you know, once they are uh, friends with you, then they will be more than happy to teach you. Uh, you know, they'll even teach you the finer aspects once they know that you're interested. So doctors and junior surgeons, as mentioned, they are able to com communicate in English. Professors. Most of the times they are traveling to different parts of the world and uh, there is no barrier in communication. Teaching is definitely based on your interaction. It is not a structured program most of the time. So it is how you communicate with, the, with, the, your, with your professor, how much is your knowledge, how much is your sincerity. And if you show that, then you'll be able to get more out of it. So uh, basically it broadens the horizon of your thought process. If you see there are a lot of centers in Europe, like uh, this was my center, it's a sports clinic from Stuttgart. And they used to do around 30 to 35 cases per day. So arthroscopy cases per day. That was the amount of work that was available. So uh, how they you know, manage their cases uh, and how they go about doing all this work. So this is very important to learn and that will definitely going to help you in the long term for what you should expect after coming back. So it gives an inspiration to think far-fetched and set high standards in your practice and makes you realize the need for constant upgradation because arthroscopy has been upgrading every one year, two year, you'll find that the things change and new things, new devices are coming, new concepts are coming. So you need to constantly upgrade in order to be in, on par with the, you know, with the best. And it helps you a bit in more comprehensive surgeon that you want to be. You know, you don't want to be an average person. You have to be something more than that. So, uh, the best best part of Europe is it's a uh, you know you can travel across when you are free there. They don't work on Saturday Sunday Sundays and ma it makes the stay uh, very enjoying. So uh, I thank you all for the patient hearing and uh, believe me, if you want to go to Europe, it's a it's a very good place to go and it's very easy as compared to others. And you can start applying today and there is a good chance that you will get a fellowship out there. Thank you.